Hi guys, welcome back to MMA Today, and we'll be breaking down UFC 283 to Shara vs. Hill, and let's get right into it. With the first fight on the card, we got Daniel Marcos, 13-0, taking on Simon Oliveira. Daniel Marcos is on a 13-fight win streak, I mean, he's only undefeated, he's looking, he's a slight underdog, he stands at 5'7", and with a 68-inch reach, with Simon Oliveira... UFC newcomer coming last year, losing to Tony Gravely back on UFC 270. He's the slight favorite. He's from Brazil, and he's five foot four, being three inches shorter than Marcos, with a with also a two inch shorter reach advantage. I mean, disadvantage. But just to make it quick, I think Daniel Marcos is gonna win this fight. I think he's going to win this fight probably by decision, just outpointing Simon Oliveira. I think Simon Oliveira could be tricky in the beginning with his guillotines. He kind of likes pulling the guillotines. But I think Daniel Marcos is just the way better fighter. I don't know why he's a slight even underdog. I th Just looking back at his film, especially his Daniel like 10 shoots fight, he's a really good striker with heavy hands, nice low kicks, even great takedown defense. I think he's going to probably just... Get a nice 30-27 on Simon Oliveira. Doesn't really impress me as much as Marcos. And with the next fight, we got Luan Lacerda taking on Cody Staman. Cody Staman, yeah, he's been on a tough three-fight losing streak, but he bounced back against Eddie Wineland, KO'd Eddie Wineland. You know, not, not really that good of a win, but it was a good bounce back from him. With Luan Lacerda, he's, I think he's from LFA. Um... Pretty much submits everybody. I think he has a 100% finish rate, if I can recall right. But Luan Lacerda is taller by one inch. And he has the big reach, a really big reach advantage. He ha having 73 inches compared to Cody Staman's 64 and a half inch reach. Uh, I think Cody Staman should win this one. He's sitting at a minus, 365, uh, minus 365. Uh, I think he's probably going to also decision this guy. Uh, it's just another case of uh, submission specialist taking on someone, a uh, gritty veteran like Cody Staman. Cody Staman, yeah, he's only got submitted by Aljamain Sterling. Like, he's fought some BJJ Wizards, but he has some good losses on his record. Again, like Aljo, I think he lost to Pedro Munoz. I wasn't sure. But he's lost to some solid guys. I think this is another debutant going to get beat down by the veteran. I think he's fine. He can even finish him on there, but I think Cody Stamant's going to win this one, especially by decision. And I'm going to get through this pretty quick. Jose, Joe San Nunes taking on Zar Farin. Farin. Yeah, I'll just get to it real quick, but I think Nunes is probably going to knock her out. Uh, she's. This is just like, if you look at her record, the other lady's record, she's not really that good of a fighter. Um, she's been finished her last fight too with Nunes coming off big KOs, even though she is shorter, five foot two, but she's knocked out I think bigger fighters, five foot ten. She got a, a nasty overhand right and I think she's gonna I think she's gonna maybe drop her in the first round and get the look for the finish in the second round, put her out in her hometown in her home country, Brazil. With the next fight we got Warley Alves taking on Nicholas Dalby with Dolby, both fighters actually having the same, uh, being the same height. Then again, you can see Dolby is on, uh, just won his last fight, with Alves getting knocked out brutally by Jeremiah Wells. Uh, Warla is, the odds are pretty even on this one. This fight is pretty much a 50 50 fight, if you ask me. I'm going to go with Dolby on this one by decision. Uh, just based on the fact that. I don't know. I think I could just trust him better because he has really good at boxing. Uh, he keeps fighters. He knows how to use his range. I think he has the longer arms. I think he has longer. Yeah, he has longer reach. He actually showed good boxing, even though he fought like a 40-year-old guy, really old guy around his age. He showed that he has really good cardio, and pretty much he just uses jab very well. I think Warley Al is probably going to fade during the later rounds, and... This fight, again, is another 50-50 fight. Like, I can see Warley Alves just dusting him in the first round. But more realistically, I just see Nicholas Dalby just jabbing him to death, kind of backing him up with front kicks. And that's it for my pick, Nicholas Dalby, plus 100. He's going to win this via decision. Next fight on the card. I'm shocked this is an early prelim, actually. 
Terrence McKinney versus Ismael Bonfim. Terrence McKinney is the taller fighter by two inches, standing at five foot ten, and he has the reach advantage, a two inch reach advantage to Ismail Bonfim's seven to one and a half inch reach. So it looks like Bonfim, he has an eighteen three record. I think he's on like a fifteen thirteen fight win streak. His only three losses is when he was a teenager. He lost to guys like Adriano Mor- Morais and Hanato Moicano. And that was over like 10, 12 years ago. He was only 15, 16 years old. He's been fighting for a very long time. With Terrence McKinney, he beat a guy, Gonzalez, kind of can. Lost to Dober, but beat Kale for Vola and choked out Ziam. He's a really nice fighter. This is a battle uh, between two prospects. Who can, and I think whoever wins this one will probably be ranked It's pretty soon. First off, let's break down Ismael Bonfim's style. He's kind of like a bigger Peter Young. He kind of has a shell style style, keeps his hands up very high. And he think about him as like the bigger version of Peter Young. I think he's like, a, he, he kind of fights very similar to Peter Young. As you can see, he's very good at boxing. He's done pro boxing when he was younger. He has great counters. He fought a great opponent, Avasov. And he dropped him right here with this counter left hook. You can see right here when he fought Augusto uh, Desai, he had great show, great takedown defense right here, multiple times stuff in his takedowns. And I think this is his, one of his best slash underrated weapons on his arsenal. Is that left? Is that just left hook to a body? It's so brutal. Like he he. He rocked Avasov multiple times. And Avasov, if you guys don't know who he is, he's a really good fighter. He was on like a 25 win streak, and he just completely got outclassed by Ismail Bonfim. But you can see here, he gets controlled pretty easily. That's kind of where Terrence McKinney, like, he'll gr- he gets grinded up against the fence pretty easily right here. And you can see he gets controlled right here again. There's, there's kind of just two flaws I noticed about him. But... We, now we're going to look at Terrence McKinney. You see Terrence McKinney, you already know, he's an all-around fighter. He has great jiu-jitsu, just explosive. Look at his takedowns right here against Ziam in this gif. Just very explosive, reverse thumb, scramble, very good scrambler. And then down here, you can see him just starch, completely starch Matt Frivola. Look, one, two, beautiful right there. He just has power at this division that doesn't make sense. It's really amazing. But... You can see, if you notice, Terrence McKinney, he stands very weird. Like, his chin's kind of poked out. Like, his defense really isn't that good. And you can see a guy like Gonzalez, who really is a can, kind of landing a lot of those. Cracked him right here, backed him up. And you can see Dober. He was winning the whole fight, to be fair. But he showed very much his gas tank. He wasted his gas tank. And Dober's still here. You can see him right here. His body language, like, he's done. Mouth wide open right here. And he's just cardio... Is it's not really that good if you ask me. He threw thirty punches. I know he threw thirty punches, go all out. But that's pretty much a big factor. It's gonna be a factor in this fight. Thus, I'm going with the sleeper pick of the night, Ismail Bonfim by second round KO, and he's cut his his line is sitting at plus one hundred and five. I think not enough people are talking about this guy. I think a lot of people on top of are even writing him off. I think he's only like 13% of the people picked him, 15%. A lot of people think it's going to be a cakewalk. But Ismail Bonfim is a counter fighter. I think this is going to be Terrence McKinney's hardest fight. I don't think he's going to get through him. I think Terrence McKinney is kind of going to fight technical maybe in the first round. Because this guy has a lot of power, a lot of knockouts too. So I don't think he's going to come guns blazing. I think he's going to get frustrated in the second round. And that's when I see Ismail Bonfim clipping him with like a hook while he's coming in or even a ripping it to the body, kind of finishing him through there. I think he's going to knock him out. If not, probably going to decision him. Just be, he has really good cardio, more, way better cardio than McKinney. I think this is just, I think this is going to be his night. Next, we got Jaltian Almeida versus Shamil Abdurakhimov. Again, I don't want to really go too much into this. This like you guys know Shamil, he got knocked out three times in the first round, or one times, uh, two times in the first round. Like, and this is Jolti Almeida. He's minus one thousand. He's probably gonna take Shamil down, or even knock him out in the hands first round. If not, he's probably gonna submit. He's gonna get the finish. I can guarantee you, he's gonna get the finish. Shamil is not really that durable. He's forty-one years old. 
you got this young prospect coming up next. Jolte Almeida, first round knockout. And, oh, I forgot to put the graphic for this one. But the next fight is Munir Laziz taking on Gabriel Bonfim. Uh, Gabriel Bonfim, first, let's just get into Laziz's style. He's kind of a pretty much, he's a, he has solid boxing, really good kickboxing. You can see when he fought Lusa right here. He has nice straight, good kicks to body, good hooks. He's like, he's pretty good. He's really good, if you ask me. But he's getting older. He hasn't really fought. One thing you notice, he fought Alves. He got, and he's struggling against Alves. just explosiveness. And you can see Alves keeping up against the fence. He got KO'd here, I think, to the body. Just went down. It was really brutal. He struggled against, so, I guess he struggles against fighters that are very explosive. And then next we got Gabriel Bonfim. Look at him right here. Just BJJ wizard. Unlike his brother, like his brother doesn't have the jiu-jitsu like, um, he doesn't have the uh, jiu-jitsu like Gabriel. You can see him choke out this dude right here in LFA. And then submit a solid guy, Waters, who's way bigger. But but one thing I noticed in that fight was he, he kind of just, he, he shot. He he has good takedowns, but he doesn't know really doesn't really set them up very well. And you can see he got caught right here and almost got submitted. But he choked the guy anyways with a Von flu choke. But I'm probably gonna go with Gabriel Bonfim, uh, second round submission. I think it's gonna be on the feet. I can see Laziz kind of boxing his head off in the first round. But then that's when I see Gabriel kind of kick it up and then get the second round sub. And there he, he's not as good as his brother Ismail, but I think he's going to beat the older veteran Laziz on this one. Next fight, we got Thiago Moises taking on Me Mel Quizel Costa. Uh, we got Moises. This is another short notice fight. It's going to be. I just see Costa, he's been submitted pretty much. He gets his head in the guillotine. He got submitted, I think, for really bad a couple of years ago. I think Thiago Moises is a BJJ wizard. He should be able to get him while he's dry. And he's sitting at minus 365. He only lost to the cream of the crop. Like, it's, he lost to Islam and he lost to Joel Alvarez. Two good, you know, they're solid guys. I don't think he's going to lose to Costa on this one. Gregory Rodriguez taking on Bruno Friera. We got Obama Cop himself. It, Obama Cop taking on Bruno Friera. Both fighters are 30 years old. Robocop being way bigger. If you just look down here, six foot three to five foot ten, even longer reach. This is another like short notice fight. He took this fight on Frihera took this fight on like two to four day notice. Robocop's gonna starch this guy. Look at him. He's just jacked to the gills, big arms. I think he's gonna KO him. Way bigger, longer. It's gonna be a quick KO, I think, in Brazil. Another we got another Brazilian. Legend Shogun Rua taking on Iho Potiura. Um, Shogun is 41 years old, taking on really young Ukraine prospect. This guy, if you ask me, he's not really that good, but he should be able to beat Shogun. Shogun's been gone for like he should have retired like when he fought Little Nog right here when he won uh, won against Little Little Nog in the trilogy fight. I don't know why he's still fighting. He has snoozer against OSP. And you can make the KC one, but does anybody care? I don't think anybody argued that he won that fight. Um, I think uh, Potiera is gonna win this fight, even though he's sitting. He's like a minus what? He's a minus two hundred favorite. He should probably be minus five hundred if you ask me. But he's not that good. This guy is not that good. He got finished by Negan Rayanu. He's fought a lot of cans. I don't, like, right before he came to UFC, he fought a dude that had, like, two wins, 30 losses or something. Not that good, but he should get the KO in maybe the second round. And on the main card, we got Paul Craig taking on Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, you can see he's a big guy, 6'6", six 82-inch six, reach, take it, uh, with Paul Craig being 6'3", with 76-inch reach. Paul Craig lost his, he was on a nice four fight win streak, losing to Volka Ozdemir, while Johnny Walker finally got a bounce back win against Ayan Kutalaba. He submitted him. And Johnny Walker is a slight favorite in this one. First, let's just get into Johnny Walker. We all know who he is. 
it's pretty much the explosive knockout machine. You can see him kill Ryan Span right here with the elbow. And you can see another elbow on Khalil Roundtree, spinning back fist. The guy's just an athletic freak monster. KO power everywhere. You know, we see him. Nowadays, he's a bit gun shy, but we know who he was. He's very, uh, just an explosive monster. But you can see Paul Craig right here. B he's, he's a BJJ wizard, if you guys don't know Paul Craig. You see him, look what he did to the guy, Jamal Hill, who's fighting for the title. You see he snapped his arm with a uh, triangle, and then you can see him j just triangle king, r chokes everybody out almost, and just, but, oh, I kind of misplaced him here, but you can see Johnny Walker, his chin is no really not that good, terrible, pretty terrible chin, Jamal Hill just tapping him, knocking him out, and you can see here, he almost got pretty much his arm snapped right here against Kutalava, so he's open to submissions, and like I mentioned earlier, Ever since the Santos fight, he's kind of been gun shy. Like he's not really that same explosive guy we really notice. But Paul Craig, you see his problems too. Like his chin really, he doesn't have the best chin. He's like he got knocked out right here by Menafield, Khalil Roundtree, and Krylov kind of knocked him out, clipped him really bad. Like he almost got knocked out before he hit that sick triangle. But I'm probably gonna go with Johnny Walker round one KO. I think this is good. We're going to see the old explosive crazy Johnny back again. And I just see him clip. I just see him clipping Paul Craig. And just I don't see Paul Craig surviving this one. Especially for Johnny Walker's power. I mean if he fights Gunshy again. Like he fought against Santos. He's probably going to lose. Uh, and uh, another thing. The possibility is. He could really get knocked out. That's something I'm kind of scared of. Paul Craig. Yeah he's not the best striking. We've seen his striking against Volka Ozdemir. But John Walker, who knows his chin at this point? He might just get knocked out by anything at this point. Augusta win. But he should have won this one. Next, we got Jessica Andrade taking on Lorraine Murphy. The Lorraine Murphy being the taller fighter by four inches. And Jessica Andrade having a smaller reach. Oh, Lorraine Murphy has a really long reach advantage compared to Jessica Andrade. But you can see she has two, she's on a nice two-fight KO streak. One actually one by submission and then one she killed. And you got Lauren Murphy, she upset Misha Tate. She kinda shocked everybody. But she got finished by Valentina Shevchenko and got absolutely obliterated. Uh my pick I didn't I forgot to put the graphic, but I think Jessica Andrade should knock her out. I think it's gonna be a late KO in the third round. I think Murphy's pretty durable. I don't see this going to decision, but I could see like a really late finish, in the third, especially halfway through the third round. I could see her just hit her, kind of, Lori Murphy's being tired, and Jessica Andrade just blasting her face and with uppercuts, going to the body. I don't think that's going to last. I, I don't think this is going to decision. It's definitely going to be a Jessica Andrade win, and she sits at minus 460. Now, we got the, uh, now we're on Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny. You can see Gilbert Burns, he lost to Hamza Chamai of his last fight with Neil Magny picking up a submission dub against Daniel Rodriguez. Gilbert Burns is the way smaller fighter. You can see Neil Magny has a big height advantage. He stands at six foot three while Burns is five foot ten. And he also has a really long reach span for this division. Eighty inch eighty inch reach compared to Burns' seventy one inch reach. And Gilbert Burns, we all know him. He has great you see him kinda didn't count as a knockdown, but he rocked Chamaya multiple times. And you can see him just slump this dude right here. Like, he, he does this a lot as a people. Big, big, very big power. But his biggest, he does everything very well. You know, great jiu-jitsu, everything. He, he's an all-around fighter. Like, he can wrestle, great jiu-jitsu. But he has just one thing. It's his weakness to jab, especially his chin, too. You can see Usman kind of finishing him, knocking him down multiple times. And Chamayev in the first round with this just slick jab right here kind of just dropped him right there. That's pretty much his main weakness. But you see Neil Magny here. Now let's break down Neil Magny. You can see him here right here. Submitting D-Rock, so he has great jiu-jitsu. Also very great wrestling. I think he was done wrestling in co at college level before. Uh, you can also see him out. He had, that's kind of – he has – just he uses a lot of one twos like jab straight, jab straight. You can see he demonstrated he demonstrated it on Robbie Waller. He does it a lot, and also 
what this is what his, he's actually the best at right here. Just grinding him up against the fence, making him tired. But Neil Magny, you can see his last fight. He got one of his last fights, actually, I think like two fights ago. He fought Max Payne. Griffin almost got knocked out. So he's a bit older, a bit chinnier. And you can see him get, and he gets, even though he has great wrestling, he still gets out-muscled by stronger fighters than him, like Shavkat Rachmanov, for example. I think Gilbert Burns is going to out-muscle him for three rounds straight and win this one via decision. He sits on min- minus 475. I think he's going to pretty much fight him the same way he did Wonderboy, kind of hold him against the fence, I'm even mix in kind of just takedowns, blast him with hooks. Uh, I don't see him finishing Neil Magny because Neil Magny, yeah, he got clipped against that Max Payne Griffin, but but I just can't see Burns finishing him. I can see him just getting pretty much dominated him, like grappling exchanges, especially on the floor, kind of get him into a couple chokes. And I think, yeah, I could just see even like a cl- – I think it's going to be a lot closer than what the odds say. It could be go even split, but I'm going to go with Gilbert Burns' decision. I think he's going to win 29 28. It's going to be a close fight. Just because Neil uh, Magny has, you know, he kind of jabs a lot, does a lot of stuff that Burns, Burns kind of weak against jabs, one twos. Next, we got the co main, Divison Figueredo, taking on Brandon Moreno for the fourth time. This time, they'll be fighting in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. We got Divison Figueredo, you know, his last one, he beat Brandon Moreno in the trilogy fight. And Brandon Moreno went in the interim belt against Kai Car France. They're both, I think the odds kind of shifted. They're not even anymore. I think Moreno is a slight favorite now. But you can see Brandon Moreno is the younger fighter, being 29 years old. And Figueredo is pretty old now, 35 years old. Moreno is taller, 5'7 to 5'5, with also the reach advantage. Now, we can see Moreno, he actually, ever since their first fight, you can see him throw more kicks now, especially since he trained with James Krause. You can see right here, nice body kick, nice head kick right here. He added that to his arsenal. Not only, he's very fast. He's always been faster than Figueredo, if you never if you never notice. Like, he kind of beats Figueredo to the punch most of the times, but he just doesn't have the right amount of power. But you can see him... He has very strong on the floor, very great BJJ, submitted Figueredo, took him down multiple times with body locks. But you can see he gets hit a lot, especially and he struggles against leg kicks like Kai Kai France was kicking his leg, Figueredo, especially in the trilogy fight, he was kicking his leg. And you can see he gets hit, like I say, he gets hit a lot. Kai Kai France was landing, you know, Figueredo cracked him multiple times throughout the first and the third fight. That's just kind of his main problem. You know, he gets hit a lot. He gets to all these crazy brawls. And now we'll be breaking down Figueredo. You know, great power for this division. He's like one flyweight knock artist. Pretty rare these days. You see him KO completely murder Joseph Benavides right here. He he actually, ever since he's been training with Hen- uh, Henry Sudo and Henry Sudo's coach, I think it was Captain Eric or something. Yeah, he's been learning a lot of... T- He's been able to hit his own body lock takedowns on Moreno, take him down a couple times in the trilogy fight. Also, you can notice here, you see him, he cracked Moreno multiple times. Look at that nasty hook right here. He landed, dropped him, almost finished him. And But my main problem with Figueredo is that second fight was just so bad. It kind of, the way he said he was sick and he had problems cutting weight. You can definitely see that here. Like, he gets dropped by just a jab. I couldn't believe how bad he looked the second fight. And also, Moreno kind of wins these grappling exchanges, even getting the submission in the second fight. So, it pretty much, you got to I'll be looking at the weigh-ins for this fight, kind of see if Figueredo pretty much is going to show up. But I'm still going to trust him here. I'm going to he's going to win by, I think he's going to be the first one to knock out Brandon Moreno. No one's done it before. I think he's going to be the one. He's going to crack the chin, find the chin, and finally knock him out. Yes, people are saying Figueredo is a lot older now. But I still think, like, look at the shape he's in. He's in great shape. Looks good. Looks healthy even right now. You can see him embedded. He's very shredded. Like, I don't think he's got a problem cutting weight. But that will be a factor for this fight, how good he looks on the scales. 
because he completely dominated. I thought he dominated him in uh, the third fight, pretty much dropped him multiple times, landed the better shots. I think in, I'm thinking if he can land those same punches, I don't think Brandon Moreno's chin's going to be able to hold up this fight. I think he's going to get knocked out. And now we have the main event, Glover Teixeira taking on Jamal Hill. Glover Teixeira being 43 years old, that's a big age gap between him and Hill. Age, Hill only being 31 years old in his prime, but you can make the case Glover's in his prime now. But you can see Glover had a tough loss against Yuri Prochaska, a fight he was winning until he got submitted last second. He was on a nice streak. And you got Jamal Hill on a three-fight winning streak. After losing to Paul Craig, he's looked really good. Knocked out three of those last three opponents. Just He's also a couple of inches bigger than Glover with a three-inch reach advantage. And you can see, like I said, Glover was dominating Geary, the champion, the big boogeyman that everybody was scared of in this division. You know, he dominated a lot of guys. And you see him just get easily worked by Glover. He's, I thought Glover was winning like three rounds, four rounds even. Geary only taking like one good round. And you can see he has great top controls just battering him. And then right here you can see he has great hands wobbling Jan, the uh, former champion Jan Blachowicz, who had a great fight against Ankalaev. And another, like, these are tough guys he's fighting. He's just outclassing them on the feet even, on the floor. And you see him choking out Jan Blachowicz. He trains with Politon, so you, you expect his boxing to be really sharp ever since he's been training with him. So, But... Glover's main weakness is one thing, uppercuts. He got clipped really bad right here by John Jones. Knocked unconscious by Rumble Johnson. You see a nice uppercut right here. And Gufferson also KO'd him with uppercuts. I feel like anything down the middle is pretty much how you put Glover out. Yuri even clipped him, dropped him, I think, with a nice fly knee. Jamal Hill had Jamal Hill, you know, he's kind of the big knockout artist nowadays. Kales, everybody he fights. The only fight he has, I think he has a hundred percent finish rate. Uh, you see him absolutely slump Johnny Walker right here. Kale crew with nasty boxing. He's very fast. He looks. He's a really big guy. You can see him. He has a big body. But I think he's really fast. I think a lot of people are underestimating. He's very fast. But then again, you can see he kind of struggled against Glover. I mean, kind of struggled against Paul Craig. You can see him get his arms completely snapped. Uh, really bad, so he got a taste of jiu-jitsu right here. Uh, you can see him getting slammed right here by Santos, a kickboxer. Santos is not really known for taking anybody down. I don't really call. I think the last guy he took down was Holland back in 2019, 2018. But you can see him kind of grind it. Like, you see Jamal Hill get a little tired right here in the later rounds. You see Santos holding him down. So, I, based off all that, I feel like Glover is kind of the better fighter here. He has, I think he has very underrated boxing because he trains with Pereira. You know, he's beat up a lot of younger guys, way younger than him. I think the age, a lot of people are writing him off just because of his age. But he's probably one of the best fighters in this division right now. I think he's going to get his belt back. I can see him pretty much. I can see Jamal Hill. I can see him even, believe it or not, I can see him knocking down Jamal Hill. I think Jamal Hill is going to be scared of the wrestling, and Glover might catch him at least at one point of the fight. I think he's going to toss Jamal Hill around, and then lay, and then Jamal Hill is pretty much kind of just going to give up. Glover takes his back and then makes him tap, gets the rear naked choke. Uh, I think he's going to defend his belt in his home, and that's all for me. Uh, let me know in the comments who you, what's your plays, what's your picks, and stay tuned for our next breakdown. We'll be breaking down Derek Lewis. Take it on speed. I will break breaking down that whole card. Like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.